So far we've covered the three core principles of the scissor paper rock model. Cut what you don't need, put important details on paper and try to make it concrete. There's just a few final lessons from scissor paper rock that can help us understand how to best manage cognitive load. In each round of scissor paper rock, two people throw out one of the three options at the same time. Scissors beat paper, paper beats rock, and rock beats scissors. If there's a tie, you play another game. You already know this, unless you live here. Get it, you know, under a rock. The game only works because of three conditions. People throw out their options at the same time, they do it next to each other, and they play one game at a time. The same principles apply to learning. People learn better when important things are timed properly, when they're spaced next to each other, and when they learn one thing at a time. These three principles are called temporal contiguity, spatial contiguity, and segmenting, respectively. Let me walk through these one by one. Back in the paper video, we talked about how signaling the important part of graphs and images helps students identify where to focus their attention. Notice how I put up the whole graph and then added the signals later? It's a little bit like the way most of us use PowerPoint. As you can see in this clip, I put up all the bullet points on the PowerPoint slide and then proceeded to walk through them, pointing out each one as I go. In my head, I'm trying to give students the bigger picture first and then walk them through each idea. I think students will follow along with me at the pace I set for them. The only problem is that when text gets shown on screen, students automatically try to read it. So while I'm speaking about this point up here, their attention can wander down here. Remember that our brains aren't good at taking and conflicting information through our two channels. When what they're reading doesn't match what they're hearing, learning can stop. The same thing might apply to this graph I showed you earlier. By putting all the labels out first, did you happen to try to figure out what the bars were saying, even though I was talking about what was happening up here? Showing information in advance that you're not going to talk about yet can cause students to divide their attention, which is not a good thing. Instead, if you want students to focus on one thing at a time, try to just present one thing at a time. This can apply to slides, graphs, images, or just about anything you display. So let's start with slides. When there's lots of information like this, it makes sense for me to just reveal one bit at a time. If I do this in time with my explanations, I can make sure the audience is following along with me. In the same way, if I build in each one of these bars at the same time as my explanation, it allows you to keep your focus on what's important at the time. It stops you getting ahead of yourself or rather getting ahead of me. This is called the temporal contiguity principle, which basically means to present information through the verbal and the visual channels at the same time. We talked about before when you were watching a movie how frustrating it might be if the voice and the visuals aren't in time. So we're trying to make everything happen at the same time. And using this effect has been shown to significantly improve student learning. In a meta-analysis of 13 studies, Paul Ginz found a large effect from temporal contiguity. This applied to scores on retention measures, transfer to other similar tasks, and measures of how quickly students completed tasks. See how much easier it was to follow that graph when the bars came out one at a time. And when you do this well, you don't have to do any signaling because the animation is the signal. It only takes a few steps to animate graphics so they're easier for students to follow. If you're using PowerPoint, just click on the text, give it an animation, and make sure the text is grouped so it comes one bullet at a time. If you look at the numbers over here, they will tell you. If the numbers are all the same, it's going to be hard to make the bullets come out at the same time as you speak. If they're different, you'll have control over when they show up. Even in that little demo there, see how it's easy to follow when the timing matches my voice. The same thing applies to spacing. We want things that relate together to be as close together as possible. Take this image of a brain, for example. It takes some mental effort to figure out which part of the brain corresponds to which label. We have to connect this letter up here to the legend all the way down here. Now we can see that this is the frontal lobe. Instead, if we change the image so that the labels are next to each other, then you can see that it's much easier to figure out which brain region is which. In our learning materials, our assessment descriptions, and even our feedback, it can make sense to put the information where it's most needed. This is an advantage of a quick mark in Turnitin, for example. Instead of identifying a problem with the writing overall, this comment shows that there's a segue missing right here. These might seem like small changes, but they have big effects. In a recent meta-analysis of 58 studies, spatial contiguity, putting related things next to each other, 
improved student learning by a large effect size. This was particularly true for higher education, where concepts are more dynamic and complex. The last one of these principles involved breaking the learning into small, meaningful segments. Imagine playing scissor, paper, rock, but you have to play three games at the same time. It'd be hard to quickly figure out which games you won, and you don't even have enough hands. But the same thing applies to learning. When we provide one long lesson without a chance to break things up and practice what we're learning, it makes it hard for students to remember everything that's happened, let alone deeply understand it. So instead, if we break the learning up into short segments like these videos, students learn better. This is called the segmenting principles. Breaking up learning into short, meaningful, coherent segments. The same thing applies to feedback. If we give one massive piece of feedback, it's much harder to learn from than little bits of feedback that are distributed. A recent meta-analysis of 56 studies found that segmenting has a wide range of benefits. It dramatically increases learning speed and it helps students manage their cognitive load, meaning they perform better on tests of retention and transfer. We used to do this by interspersing lectures with short discussions or multiple choice activities. Tutorials are often broken up into chunks in which each one explains something different. Assessments are easier when there's discrete sections that students can work on before pulling the whole thing together. Overall, if classes were structured like games of scissor, paper, rock, students would be learning much more. If we can break the class into bite-sized segments and provide key information at the same time and place, then we can stop students from getting overloaded and accelerate their learning.